Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here. Well, you will not believe what just happened to Nikki Haley, okay? This is a massive bombshell of a video. Donald Trump has exposed the truth about Nikki Haley. And this quite literally might be the end of the road for this woman. And in my opinion, people like Nikki Haley, people like Mike Pence, people like Barack and Michelle Obama, and even the Clintons, Letitia James, all these people who, you know, have gone after Donald John Trump in the past, I think we deserve to get the truth out there about these people so that when they try to make a return like Nikki Haley's doing, we actually, yeah, we remember Nikki, we remember. So we're going to get the truth out there. But before we do, we're going to read the Bible because God comes first. Amen? Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first, all right? Today, we're going to do a special Bible reading. This comes from the book of Isaiah 40. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. Comment amen down below. Guys, if you feel weak, hope in God. He will renew your strength. All right? And not only... Renew your strength, but literally soar, soar on wings like eagles. Absolutely love that, okay? I just started getting into running lately, and, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, you know, you're running, and you're running, and you're running, you just want to give up, and then you, you know, just keep pushing, keep pushing. God's just there in your life, whatever you're dealing with, and he's just saying, you know, he's helping you get through it, all right? You don't need to run. You don't need to be running on your own. God's carrying you. So just try to imagine that. And uh, I know a lot of people on my show. They say, Dylan, why are you talking bad about people? Why do you talk bad about people? I only talk. I only expose the truth about people who I honestly. I expose the truth about everyone. All right. I get the truth out there, and the, quite frankly, the media, they're trying to push their narrative. Well, here on my show. I try to show the truth so people can actually see. That's why I started my channel in the first place, was that so people could have a place to come where they weren't subject, you know, they weren't like watching CNN or, or Fox News or something, but they could actually just see something unbiased. I've kind of woken up to what's actually taking place because I never used to be political. So now I support Donald John Trump and I think he's the hope for our future. But I try to be, you know, just as clear cut as possible. So let's dive in, guys. Another thing, too, guys, is like, I feel like the public deserves to know this stuff. Like, this is stuff that I would want to know if I were trying to navigate the political sphere. So, again, this is um, Nikki Haley. You know, we're going to get into the deep, dark truth here. But this is Nikki Haley in January. And she basically is criticizing Trump's age. Listen Most to this, Americans. guys do not want a rematch between Biden and Trump. No! The first party to retire its 80-year-old candidate is going to be the party that wins this election. So, so she's basically saying that the Democrats are going to win now. Keep in mind this video. She says the first candidate who retires their old, she's their first 80-year-old. Trump's not 80. Biden's over 80. But anyways... She's saying whoever takes down their old candidate, they're going to win. So she's basically rooting for the Democrats Most Americans here. do not want a rematch between Biden and Trump. No. And I actually just don't. The first party to retire its 80-year-old candidate is going to be the party that wins this election. Most so... She's basically, you know, coming out and supporting the Democrats in, in a way, right? Because they, they dropped, they dropped uh, Joe Biden. Now listen to this, guys. Now she's coming out and supporting Trump. Joe Biden is not going to be the nominee. I would make any bets about that. Hmm. The party that gets rid of their 80-year-old candidate is the party that's going to win. Who do you think win. will be the Wait, she just said it again. Democratic nominee. Well, I, I've said there's going to be a female president of the United States. It will either be me or it will be Kamala Harris. And if Donald Trump is the nominee, mark my words, we will see a president Kamala Harris. 
Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. She's a flip-flopper. She's a flip-flopper. Because she just spoke at the RNC saying that she's now supporting Trump. You don't have to agree with Trump 100% of the time to vote for him. Well, there was a change. Join us tonight to talk about the presidential campaign, the situation in the Middle East, former presidential candidate, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Governor, thanks for being here. No, it's great to be with you. You know, when you talk to somebody about... All right, we got to do the book test real quick. Firstly, usually when I go after these people, I always do the book test. If they're selling books, there's a reason why they're staying in the race because they're trying to sell books and they probably have a deal with Simon and Schuster. Did she just release a book? She did. If you want something done is what it's called. Nikki Haley wrote a book called Leadership Lessons for a Moment. If you want something done. Yeah, she's only got 416 reviews. She's probably trying to sell some of these books. You always got to look guys and see, are they selling books? Because what, what did we see with Mike Pence? He had, Mike Pence signed a seven-figure book deal with Simon and Schuster, uh, three to four million dollars, and he got paid money to basically talk crap about Trump in his book. So I think that's the reason why he ran for president and why Mike Pence is going out to Israel and doing all this stuff because I think he's trying to get book sales. Same thing with Nikki. Let's tune in that evolution. Obviously, you're running for president in one, and you're endorsing the former president at the RNC in another. H how do you explain that, and where do you see it right now? Well, if I thought Donald Trump and Joe Biden were the best candidates, I wouldn't have run. I ran because I thought I could do a better job. I ran because I really cared about the next generation, what was going to happen, and all of the issues that I talked about on the campaign trail. But we are where we are. I am a voter, too. I have to make a choice. And when I look at the issues and I look at the differences between the two candidates we've been given, there's no question that I want to see Donald Trump win this election because we can't have a Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. I mean, all you have to do is look at what Kamala Harris has said. She doesn't think illegal immigrants are illegal. She thinks that we should give them free education, free place to live, free health care. Tim Waltz thinks socialism is neighborly, and he's gone a step further and thinks we should give them free tuition. They want to raise taxes. You look at everything that's happened with our economy already. We can't afford that more than anything from a national security perspective. You can't go to Kamala Harris and Tim Walls, who have not had the foreign policy experience, and the experience they do have is that they want to expand the Iran deal and give more money to a terrorist organization that says... That well, I think, I mean, the not to give De uh, Kamala any credit, but her supporters are kind of stupid, so they're probably going to vote for her regardless. Okay. Listen okay. to this. This is... Um, Kamala Harris, she's holding Phoenix, Arizona. Kamala Harris is holding a rally in Phoenix, and they, some guy actually interviewed Kamala Harris supporters, asking them why are they voting for Kamala, or um, and the answers will shock you. Listen. Kamala Harris is holding a rally in Phoenix, Arizona, and her supporters are asked, "What is your favorite Kamala accomplishment?" Today, we're trying to find out from the attendees what Kamala Harris's greatest accomplishment has been MVP. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm not too into politics. I'm just here for the vibe. Uh, becoming the first uh, female vice president. So becoming, just becoming the VP is the best accomplishment? Yeah, absolutely. Being a good person. Being a good person? <laughs> yeah, um, she's, I mean, she's, 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 she, I don't know. <laughs> she seems really good for women. They don't know anything about her. It's crazy. Harris is there with the energy. She has a lot of enthusiasm, so... It's important to get behind her. What is Kamala's like top accomplishment you think? Um, I can't say anything right now. Um, wait a second. Uh, her top, her top, um, like contributions to policy or policy as VP. I wasn't in on the policy making decisions with, with President Biden. It's crazy how all of Kamala Harris's biggest supporters they can't even name one thing that she's done as VP for the past three and a half years. It's it's shocking, but all these people are turning up to vote for her. Harris 2024 POTUS, a black job? This is so weird. 
I mean, is this a ra is this a racial thing? I don't get why. That's weird. So I don't know. Hey, they're puppies. Oh my gosh. See, I wish they would tell us more about that because I honestly don't know. Yeah, you know what's crazy, guys? Is I was trying. I was I was doing my research yesterday, and I went to Kamala Harris's website. And she doesn't list any of her policies on her site anywhere. There's no political... I don't know why people are supporting her because anywhere you go on her whole site, it doesn't even mention any of her policies that she's running on. I mean, she has her little bio where she talks about, you know, how she used to be um, a uh, attorney general in California and this and that, but it doesn't talk about doesn't talk about any of her policies. So it's like, how are Democrats even, like why would you want to donate to her when you don't even know what you're, what she's campaigning on? I mean, it's super strange and she doesn't do any interviews. It's, it's really, really weird. So let's, let's keep listening. Death to America, there's a lot of differences there. We are where we are. And right now for me, for my family, for those that I love and as a voter, I think we need to, hope that Donald Trump wins this election. You know, a couple of recent polls uh, have shown this bump that this enthusiasm that this new ticket has received. Uh, Reuters has registered voters at 49-47 uh, with Harris leading and among young voters a big shift uh, going that way. Uh, NPR, PBS, Marist has at 51-48 and with suburban women uh, Harris leading significantly. Will you Suburban woman? That's kind of shocking. I feel like a lot of suburban women like Trump. That's weird. Go out and campaign for the former president. Well, I think the first thing you need to ask is, you know, I said that early on, I said a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. I was always running against Kamala Harris. Republicans should not be surprised that we are now running against Kamala Harris. It was her all the time. There was no way Joe Biden, in the condition that we saw him, could take on the stresses of a presidential election. So, you know, that was something I believed in then. It's why I constantly referred back to her, because I knew that Kamala Harris was the person that we had. And look, what I'll say is it's not an issue of whether I go out and... and campaign for Donald Trump. He's decided the way he wants to do this. What I will tell you is the Republican Party needs to make a serious shift here. And the first thing is the Republican Party, Donald Trump, people here at Fox, quit complaining that she's not giving an interview. You don't need an interview from Kamala Harris. I take her at her word. I take her at her word that she wants to raise taxes for households over $100,000, that she wants to add a pharmaceutical tax and a health care tax. I take her at her word that she thinks that illegal immigrants should be able to vote. And I don't know, guys. I don't know. What do you guys think about Kamala Harris? For me, I mean, l listen to when she came out to endorse Trump and look at Trump's reaction, guys. This is crazy. This was at the RNC. I'm surprised she did not get booed off stage. Matt Gates said if Kevin McCarthy went up there, he would get booed off. Why are people cheering for Nikki Haley? Are we living in an alternate universe? Who likes her? My fellow Republicans. She's got some balls to go up and speak at the RNC. I'll, I'll just give her that. President Trump, President Trump asked me to speak to this convention in the name of unity. Did Trump ask her to speak? It was a gracious invitation, and I was happy to accept. I'll start by making one thing perfectly clear. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. Look at Trump, guys. Look at Trump. He stands up for her. 
Look at that face though. Yeah. I don't know if he did ask her. I mean, I'm having trouble believing Nikki Haley here. He doesn't even look up at her. Who are these people cheering for Nikki Haley? Yeah, look at Marjorie Taylor Greene. What a bad, I don't like to cuss on my show, but she's a powerhouse of a woman. Our country is at a critical moment. We have a choice to make. For more than a year, I said a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for President Kamala Harris. After seeing the debate, everyone knows it's true. If we have four more years of Biden or a single day of Harris, our country will be badly worse off. Badly worse off. It's like, yeah, no crap. Who are you, listen, who, look who you're talking to. This is uh, Donald Trump slamming Nikki for staying in the race after his New Hampshire GOP primary win. Let's tune into this, guys. She did very poorly, actually. She had to win. The governor said, she's gonna win, she's gonna win, she's gonna win. Then she, she failed badly, but Ron beat her also. You know, Ron came in second and he left. She came in third and she's still hanging around. She did very poorly, actually. She, she should have dropped out. She absolutely should have dropped out. Here's uh, Trump roasting Nikki Haley. Listen to this, guys. This was after he won. This is uh, or the, the New Hampshire GOP primary. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Whoa. USA. 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 Come on, guys. Comment USA down below if you want Trump. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now. Three. three. We win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. We've won it. And it's a very, very special place to me. It's very important. If you remember in 2016, we came here and we needed that win. And we won by 21 points. And it was great. And uh, today, I have to tell you, it was very interesting because I said, wow, what a great victory. But then somebody ran up to the stage all dressed up nicely <laughs> when it was at seven. But now I just walked up and it's at 14. <laughs> but she ran up when it was seven. And, you know, we have to do what's good for our party. And she was up and I said, wow, she's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win, she lost. And you know, last last week we had a little bit of a problem. And if you remember, Ron was very upset because she ran up and she pretended she won Iowa. And I looked around, I said, didn't she come in third? Yeah, she came in third. And then I looked at the polls, she was talking about most winnability, who's going to win. And I had one put up, I don't know if you see it, but I have one put up. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against Crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. I'm really curious to see how, uh, what Trump is, how Trump is performing against Kamala Harris. Um, because again, like I just, you just saw in those interviews with those Kamala Harris supporters, um, though the, uh, Kamala Harris supporters, they don't even know why they're supporting Kamala. Support for Trump, Harris nearly tied. Here we go, we got some polls here. Michigan, Harris is beating Trump in Pennsylvania, guys. And Wisconsin and Michigan, are you serious? Three swing states. From the New York Times and Siena College shows Vice President Kamala Harris has taken the lead in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Republican pollster Frank Luntz has suggested that Trump's persona is factoring into the former president's drop in the polls. Brett, what is the Trump camp? Trump's persona? That he got shot and stood up and raised his fist and said, fight, fight, fight? saying about the latest numbers and with the swing states back in play will the trump campaign these bozos don't have any idea what they're talking about look at this dude he's got one ear earphone in he's only got in one ear earphone this chick the hill give me a break are they do we have any other polls 
That was a that was, well, it was that New York Times poll. Um, let's see if we have any other polls. Harris has slight edge. This is Quinnipiac. Harris has slight edge over Trump in race. Gets boost from women. Are you serious? Are you serious? Will Kamala Harris's polling lead last? Our polling expert explains. Trump has slipped into second place? How? Are you serial? Are you serious? Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, this is former President Donald Trump calling Nikki Haley a globalist. Tune into this, guys. When you said yesterday that uh, she was a globalist fool, Back when she was your UN ambassador, you did praise her quite a bit in that job, even when she was leaving that job. So, she well, yeah, even people like Mike Pence can start off good and then go south. All right, people can switch sides. We saw the opposite with JD Vance. JD Vance was a never Trumper, and then now he's a Trumper. Pushes back and refers to those times. Well, look, she is a globalist. I've always known that about her. And our country cannot be globalists. We don't even have that choice anymore. We owe thirty-five trillion dollars, and we have to take care of ourselves first. But you know, I had no wars going on. We defeated ISIS. I defeated ISIS in a matter of months. They said it would take four or five years. I did it in a few months, uh, and I just took everybody. I was taking everybody out. It was the opposite. I rebuilt the military, but the opposite. And we really had peace through strength in this country. But I got to know everybody, and I got to know Nikki very well. Nikki was not a great negotiator. She had certain things that she was good at, but she wouldn't be good for this job. I can tell you that right now. Wow, I love hearing Donald John Trump. Now, this is Donald Trump Jr. slamming Nikki Haley and revealing the truth, guys. I said I wasn't holding back. We're playing all the clips today. This is Trump Jr. Tune into this. He's uh, shedding a lot of truth here. <laughs> This is Trump Jr. exposing the truth about Nikki Haley, guys. Well, if they want to be in every war in the history of the world, they should vote for Nikki Haley. If they want to get back to peace uh, and prosperity, uh, the choice is clear that it's Trump. Did you want to show up with the story? Totally had nothing to do with it. I just, I showed up, you know, where, where I... You know what I think, guys? I think uh, Nikki Haley, she has a another reason for getting involved. Uh, she just came out and spoke to CNN. She sat down with uh, Jake Tapper, this guy. And I really do believe people like Nikki Haley, they have alternative motives for being so involved. Like she wants, in my opinion, she, want, she, she wants a role back in working for Trump again if he wins so that she can sell more books. I really think if you just... And then she can make more money like she she wants or she wants to be a future president. I mean, what? She was basically the runner up almost behind Trump. I mean, this is actually kind of scary, guys, because Nikki Haley in the future, she's probably going to run for president again. I just I don't like this woman at all. So, so much has happened since we last sat down and talked. Um, you dropped out of the race. 
you endorsed Donald Trump. You spoke at the Republican National Convention. Your father sadly passed away. Uh, your I mean, husband... why is she going on interview after interview after interview? Is she speaking at the RNC all of a sudden? Because it's been months, guys. Michael, who's a, a major in the South Carolina National Guard, returned from a year abroad. And I want to get to all of that. But first, I have to start with the news from Sunday of President Biden dropping out of the presidential race. Um, you have always been skeptical that he could last for another four years in office. Were you surprised? I wasn't surprised and I didn't take happiness in it. You know, I mean, I think through the whole campaign, you know, I fought for mental competency tests. I wasn't doing it to be disrespectful. I wasn't doing it to be mean. I was doing it because I think it's not just Joe Biden. There is an issue that we have in D.C. where people will go into office and they won't let go. And then their staffers and their family keep propping them up. And it's a problem for the American people. And so I never thought he would make it to the election. Um, I always said a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. And I think that's what's... No effing duh, dude. Kamala Harris is Joe Biden's VP, and everybody was already saying that Joe Biden's too old anyways. I mean, this girl's a complete idiot. That's her famous tagline. I always said a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala. It's like, no duh. You don't need to keep saying that. Like, that's some enlightening statement. You also said, in addition to a vote for Joe Biden, well, you said a vote to, for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. You also have said, if we nominate Donald Trump, I guarantee you we're going to have President Kamala Harris. Do you still feel that way? I think that, you know, look, the Democrats are very smart to put in a younger candidate. I think that that's what America has craved. But I think what you look at is they put in the weakest candidate they could put in. You look at the fact that Kamala, I mean, she had one job. That was to deal with illegal immigration and the border. She didn't do it. She well, we could all agree that Kamala Harris didn't handle the border situation well, but... Uh, let, let's watch some of Nikki Haley's um, speech at the RNC, guys, or the rest of it, and then um, I'll let you know my thoughts after. For the sake of our nation, we have to go with Donald Trump. But there's more to it than that. We should acknowledge that there are some Americans who don't agree with Donald Trump 100% of the time. I happen to know some of them. And I want to speak to them tonight. My message to them is simple. You don't have to agree with Trump 100% of the time to vote for him. Take it from me, I haven't always agreed with President Trump. But we agree more often than we disagree. We agree on keeping America strong. We agree on keeping America safe. And we agree that Democrats have moved so far to the left that they're putting our freedoms in danger. I'm here tonight because we have a country to save. And a unified Republican Party is essential for saving her. For those who have some doubts about President Trump, I want to tell you a few things about the Commander-in-Chief I know and worked with. As Ambassador to the United Nations, I had a front row seat to his national security policies. We sure could use those again. Think about it. 
When Barack Obama was president, Vladimir Putin invaded Crimea. With Joe Biden as president, Putin invaded all of Ukraine. But when Donald Trump was president, Putin did nothing. No invasions. No invasions, no wars. That was no accident. Putin didn't attack Ukraine because he knew Donald Trump was tough. A strong, a strong president doesn't start wars. A strong president prevents wars. Then look at the Middle East. Every problem in that part of the world can be laid at the feet of Iran. The dictators who chant death to America are the bankrollers and weapons suppliers for Hamas and Hezbollah. They're behind the barbaric massacres and the hostage taking. Once again, compare Trump and Biden. Trump got us out of the insane Iran nuclear deal. He imposed the toughest sanctions ever on Iran. And he eliminated the arch terrorist Qasem Soleimani. Iran was too weak to start any wars. They knew Trump meant business, and they were afraid. And then there's Joe Biden. He lifted the sanctions. He begged them to get back into the nuclear deal. He surrendered in Afghanistan. He sent every possible sign of weakness. Even now, while Hamas is still holding Ameri Americans hostage, Biden is pressuring Israel instead of the terrorists. Between Israel and Hamas, Donald Trump is clear about who is our friend and who is our enemy. Then look at the border. It's the single biggest face, it's the, it's the single biggest threat Americans face. Under Joe Biden, migrants are coming into our country by the thousands every day. We have no idea who they are, where they end up, or what they plan to do. And let me remind you, Kamala had one job, one job, and that was to fix the border. Now imagine her in charge of the entire country. <laughs> Under Donald Trump, we didn't have the border disaster we have today, and we won't when he is president again. I was proud to serve America in President Trump's cabinet. And I'll tell you something you won't hear from the critics. He appreciated advice and input. Americans were well served by his presidency, even if they didn't agree with him on all things. Now, to my fellow Republicans, we must not only be a unified party, we must also expand our party. We are so much better when we are bigger. We are stronger when we welcome people into our party who have different backgrounds and experiences. And right now, we need to be strong to save America. This is a defining moment, not only for our party, but for our country. Our fellow Americans are fearful right now. 
Families are suffering from inflation and wages that don't keep up with prices. Young people are being indoctrinated to think our country is racist and evil. The Jewish community is facing an obscene rise in anti-Semitism. Too many minorities are trapped in communities devastated by crime. Our foreign enemies win when they see Americans hate each other. They see that today, whether it's on college campuses or in a field in Butler, Pennsylvania. But we can conquer those fears with strength and unity. No president can fix all of our problems alone. We have to do this together. America has an amazing ability to self-correct. In this moment, we have a chance to put aside our differences and focus on what unites us and strengthens our country. Let us join together as a party. Let us come together as a people, as one country, strong and proud. Let us show our children and the world that even on our worst day, we are blessed to live in America. God bless you. Thank you. God bless the United States of America. So let me know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and God bless.